Welcome back. We're in the book of Exodus chapter 40 today. I'll read verses 13 to 16 and then just comment briefly. Here they are. You shall put the holy garments on Aaron and anoint him and consecrate him that he may minister as a priest to me. You shall bring his sons and put tunics on them and you shall anoint them even as you have anointed their father that they may minister as priests to me and their anointing will qualify them for a perpetual priesthood throughout their generations. Thus Moses did according to all that the Lord had commanded him. So he did. Okay, so this is, uh, we just said it. This was the setting up of the tabernacle, and uh, it's all being put together here. Now, we've more or less finished the book, and now this is the beginning. Uh, there's going to be a, this is a sequence, a summary, and there's going to be a sequence of summaries that happen here as we round out and as the book is completed. And so this, you read that, and you noticed it in what we read. This is a summary kind of a statement. Everything's anointed. Everything is on the, everything's on the move. It's all set up now, and we're ready to go. And another piece that we have here is precision of fulfillment. When we get all this repetition in there, it shows us that, you know, God called for it one way, and this is the way it came out. It came out just exactly as he wanted it. Precision of fulfillment. The Bible is not kind of a wishy-washy, uh, sort of works kind of book. It, there's a lot of things in here that are uh, that are very intentionally, very extremely exact precision. Yes, there are some bits that are perhaps less precise, just as there always are when something isn't a key uh, key bit. Uh, we don't need exact precision in every respect and every single thing that's written. But here we have uh, at the tabernacle pulled together quite exactly. And so we have that. I have a comment here from Stuart in Stuart's commentary. So listen to what Stuart says here, a little note from Stuart's commentary on Exodus. Moses was not the maker of the tabernacle, but he was its quality control supervisor who saw by personal inspection that, he conf that it conformed to all that Yahweh had directed on Mount Sinai. That's page 787 from Stuart's commentary. I recommend these commentaries uh, that I've been using here to you, obviously, or I wouldn't have used them. Uh, but yeah, Moses is the quality control inspector. Remember, the commentaries, the use of a Bible commentary is not to overshadow or twist or bend the text. A good Bible commentary will help you understand the background of the text. It'll give you some insight on particulars that you wouldn't maybe necessarily have. So these Bible commentaries are definitely not, you know, a rule. They are a help. Uh, to interpreting. And why would we not uh, receive the help of some of these scholars who have labored and put in put numerous hours in terms of trying to lay out and, and not only that, but just to think it through and and really help us. So, so commentaries can be useful even though they're not uh, an authority like the Bible itself is. So here we have again this uh, consecration. It's all put together. Their clothing goes on, and they're going to minister, and so it's going to be exactly precision fulfillment. God's plans always come together just the way he'd have them. And so, friends, there's just, uh, just a few more days, and we'll be done with the book of Exodus. I hope you'll join me tomorrow morning as we carry on. We're working toward the end of chapter 4-0 uh, from the book of Exodus out of all of our chapters. God bless you, and let's be part of the work of God every day and even this day for you and me. Bye-bye.